My guest this morning in the studio with me is Jacques Fresco and Roxanne Meadows. Good morning, morning to both of you. Jacques, uh, you, were, you were talking, we were talking off air just a moment ago about scientists and uh, politicians, because I was, I was telling uh, Jacques that the Prime Minister normally is on the air around this time of the morning on a Thursday morning, but of course he's over talking with other politicians about promises, nuclear energy, um, products that, that make that could be possibly stolen by terrorists to make nuclear weapons. Has, uh, as someone who's who's lived through the Second World War and, and Hiroshima and and seen the growth of the uh, the nuclear arsenal in the world, is it part? Is that part of what's uh, is, what drove you to to the way you think today? I think that there was a great depression in America. My father was an agronomist, agriculturist. He's one of the first guys laid off. Then the banks fell, and he was put out of the house. He was buying the house but he couldn't get his money because the banks failed. There were millions of Americans sleeping in every empty lot. There were men up on soapboxes, mankind united, Nazi point of view, socialist, communist, free enterprises. Everybody talked about a new world. It's the depression that made them do that. And so what happened, people began to starve in New York, so Al Capone, opened more soup kitchens than the federal government. Did you know that? Mm. It's very interesting that people thought things, things were bad, so they lost that job. They don't understand that the economy you live in is utterly corrupt and stupid. Uh, we think man puts himself on a pedestal. That's the highest form of yeah. life. Absolutely. He yeah. pollutes the air, the oceans, kills one another in God's name. If you don't believe in my God, I shoot you. Yeah. So you have nothing but major forms of stupidity. I do a lecture called The Limitless Dimensions of Human Stupidity. And that's what you have in the world today. All nations are corrupt, not just the US and Britain and France. You know, they're all the same. But no monkey, and, no, no monkey likes being told that he's stupid. What's that? No monkey likes being told he's stupid. Well, stupid meaning <laughs> misinformation. Yeah. And the schools manage, the newscasts manage what goes out there. They manage the news, rewrite it, but in a true democracy, your president would criticize another country. Then we would invite the prime minister of that country on the air for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Then we invite the prime minister of Sweden, because they're both full of shit. This is how <laughs> I see it. So that's a democracy, every point of view. But if you just got religion on the air, Saturday and Sunday, it's controlled. Right. So you should have all religion and non-religion, whatever people believe on the air, and let the people turn it off. When, if, if in the society that you imagine and that, that you talk about in the, in the Venus Project, that, that hopes to be the beginning, the seeding the idea, do you do, are there leaders? Uh, is there is there money? Is, there are no leaders. So how does that work? Is it anarchy? Well, I'll try to describe it. It's not easy. All right, no, 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 understand. Okay, here we go. Let's say that a computerized system is a Department of Agriculture. One, it has electrical tentacles into the soil. If the water table drops, that pumps water out there. You don't need a guy with a telephone. Hmm. Political government was good a hundred years ago, but today most of our problems are technical. And everything that you have is good today. Automobiles, airplanes, telephones are all technical. The politician never added anything to the culture. They don't know how to increase the agricultural yield, make cars safe on the highways. They know nothing. They're businessmen and lawyers. So, in the in the, in the creation of of uh, civilization like this, who do we, who do we trust to make to say this is the best way of building this, and this is these are the the actual results. There must be people. There must be people that you have to look to to, to trust their opinion and their and their thoughts. Or is it, we is don't it use the, words like trust. Our language was designed thousands of years ago, so we can't talk to each other. We talk at each other. People take what you say. It goes through their head and it comes out different. But there is the possibility of a language that has direct communication. Today, our language, we cannot communicate. We talk at each other, and the proof is, sometimes somebody says, have a nice weekend. Why don't they say, have a nice life? Why just a weekend? But you see, <laughs> yeah. the language is so old, we don't know what we're talking about. 
So when you read the Bible, you say Jesus meant this. She says, no, he meant that. He says, you're both wrong. So you have the Seventh-day Adventists, the Jumpers for Jesus, the Catholics, all these different denominations, because it's subject to interpretation. So is our language. But it's possible to develop a language that's not subject to interpretation. Mathematics, chemistry, when a chemist writes a formula, no matter where it goes, they don't say, I think he meant this. She mm -hmm. says, no, he meant that. If the language of science was ambiguous, you couldn't build bridges. As a, do, uh, as scientists, people that would be, uh, would there be room for scientists? No, in the, in not at all. There will be assigned different projects. In other words, a geologist will tell us if we build a nuclear plant here, the probability is earthquakes will damage it. So before we build anything, we do a study of the positive gains and the negative effects equal time so that nobody dominates anything. The earth and its resources determine our standard of living. Does it mean, does it mean that, that to the, the people that, that are living on the earth now, what, do, what does that mean they have to give up to, 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 to understand, to, to, to reintroduce no. these ways of thinking into their... Sort of you have to have a collapse of the economy, just like we're having now. All the world's economies are collapsing. And we're bailing out the banks. That's not going to work. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, and I think it's important that people know that your your vision for this isn't just as a result of that collapse. This is um, the Venus Project that's been going for how long? The Venus Project. Well, we I've been working on it most of my life. I'm 94, and uh, I work on it because I feel f tremendous fear of the direction people are going in. Our universities are better equipped than ever. But the wars are getting worse. We got bombs now that are a thousand times more explosive than the Hiroshima bomb. What can you accomplish with that? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. So when you think about it, think about it. The military expenditures by all nations, they give soldiers whatever they need to kill with. Soldiers are killing machines. If the war was real, they would conscript all the war industries so no one made a buck out of war. War is big business, it's a sham, and the soldiers themselves, they put up their lives to defend the country. Why don't you conscript all industry so no one makes profit out of war? You wouldn't have war if you did that. The, um, you're, you're involved, some people may know you from the Zeitgeist movement as well. You're involved in that. Do you want to give us a, a, a brief uh, indication of what that's about for people who don't know? Uh, Peter Joseph released the information on the Zionist front. He's seen it. Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist project. Yeah. And what we said, we, people wrote him and said, okay, the world is bad, it's corrupt, what can we do about it? He says, I don't know. Roxanne sent him the best that money can buy, a book by the Venus Fund, A Society Without Money. Yeah. And uh, he read that, and he flew out right away, and he shot, he's pushing now the Venus Project, because he said all the liberals, the old 1929 liberals, point out to the shortcomings, but they don't offer a workable solution. Mm. And if you offer no solution, you leave people in midair. So Venus Project is what you do about it. For example, when you drive your car, it says, uh, slippery when wet, drive carefully. We put abrasive in the highway, so it's not slippery when wet. We, we put up signs, drive carefully, school children crossing. The pavement looks like a comb. When a kid presses a button, the pavement turns up. So no car can hit a kid. That's what we really want. Solutions, not words. Be kind, be good. If you had the kindest people in government, if we ran out of resources, there'd be riots, stealing, everything. So what we need is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. Jacques Fresco, thank you so much for coming into the studio with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Hey, oh, just quickly, Mike, say how, how was that for you? Amazing, my mind. Awesome. Yeah, that's, what, that's what we like. Now, there's an interesting 94-year-old. <laughs> <laughs>